It's no secret that campaign ads can be deceiving, and it's something we've talked about before. Like last year, when NPR reporter Yeo Wei Shaw told us about a disinformation campaign focused on tanking a politician's career. Well, the midterm elections are just around the corner, and we're sure to be seeing a lot of campaign ads that span the spectrum of truthiness. But not all of these claims will hold up. Take this campaign sign from a New York City Council race last year, a sign that was still standing as of July. It accuses Democratic incumbent Justin Brannon of defunding the police, and it's a reputation that follows him to this day. But is there any truth to it? And what can an old campaign sign on a lawn in Brooklyn tell us about the state of our democracy? This sign was something that became pretty ubiquitous across the district ahead of that election, uh, but it, it is devoid of all the context and the details. That's Bridget Bergen from WNYC and The Gothamist, who investigated the sign and its claims. So this was from Brian Fox, who is the Republican and conservative candidate running for city council against Justin Brannon, who is the incumbent Democrat who is running for re-election. And this was one of the slogans that his campaign decided to use. They thought it would be a simple, effective message for voters that would tie into or tap into this sentiment that was really kind of percolating. Is it true? Is the candidate in question somebody who wanted to defund the police? The answer is complicated. Um, there is both the communication tactic that was being used and then the facts of the, the budget vote that this sign was attacking. In truth, Brannon did vote as city council member for a controversial budget that shifted funds from the NYPD. But it was part of a larger spending package that included education, elderly care, and other crucial city services. It certainly did not uh, you know, abolish the NYPD, um, but it did reallocate some funds. Even so, the money cut from the police budget had been restored before the sign was ever made. When Bridget confronted the candidate about his misleading campaign slogan, he said it was part of his overall law and order message that he wanted uh, to communicate to voters that he supported the NYPD. And I talked to some different experts about, well, how would you actually define what he's doing there? Since you know, there's a kernel of truth, but the overall slogan is not entirely true. Bridget would discover the candidate was using a propaganda technique called paltering. It's a way to mislead or even lie by using partial truths. In this case, it was true the council member had voted for a budget that included moving funds from the police department. But the claim is still false because it never happened. Many of the cuts that were proposed um, didn't sort of materialize in the way that they were proposed and specifically the precincts within that city council district actually didn't see any changes to headcount and the resources went up. The other follow-up question, I guess, is did it work? Well, I think that is one issue that the candidates actually both agree on, that the sign was effective. It, it did really leave a mark. Bridget tried tracking down the owner of the sign for an interview, but could only find a neighbor who lived across the street. So what is the impression this sign has made on this neighbor, on this other potential voter? And so I went over and we started talking and I asked this gentleman he, about what he thought of the sign. And he said, oh yeah, Justin Brannon, you know, he defunded the police. And so then we had the conversation about the complexity of the budget vote. And he said he found it interesting, but for him and his sense of his environment, his neighborhood and some of the other changes he was feeling, that message really resonated. I mean, New York City has a vibrant local news scene, but lots of markets around the country, local papers who used to be someplace to turn to for kind of like their voter guide, and what mattered, you know. I mean, do you think that the demise of local media has something to do with how people believe uh, these kind of quick hit sound bites or tweets or yard signs? When there isn't another source of information, what are you, what is the voter left to do? And the void that it gets filled by are these national outlets, the Fox News, the MSNBC, and you know, some of these outlets can be extremely partisan on the left and on the right. And 
I think we are seeing you know, that absence of local news, the absence of accountability in communities um, can have a real detrimental effect to voter turnout, to our faith in elections and institutions. Local newspapers have been in a steep decline, especially in the last 15 years, with advertisers today spending a lot more on digital ads than on newspaper ad space. A recent Northwestern University study shows more than 20% of Americans either live in a news desert or in a community at risk of becoming one. In the absence of legitimate news sources, more people are now getting their information from social media. Because people may not be engage in, engaging in some of the issues that are very local to their community, they become these referendum on national issues. And so the way people are feeling about you know, the president, whether it is the former president, Trump, or the current president, President Biden, you know, that plays into how they are feeling about um, the parties in these races. So can candidates simply lie in their campaign ads? Turns out, by law, they sure can. Thanks to the Communications Act of 1934, the federal government can only regulate truth in commercial ads. When it comes to political ads, it's up to individual platforms to decide whether or not to air. You might recall a number of news networks rejecting several of President Trump's past campaign ads, including this one equating migrants to criminals, or this one, which likened the impeachment proceedings to an attempt to overthrow the government. It's nothing short of a coup, and it must be stopped. So what can a candidate do to get ahead of political disinformation? There are some communication techniques that, you know, that experts will point to. Pre-bunking, getting ahead of a, a, a misleading message and acknowledging it before it is weaponized against you is one, one thing that you know, a candidate and, and certainly um, institutions can do. The, one of the examples that was described to me was, you know, a lot of what, you know, the U.S. was doing in the lead up to the war in Ukraine, where there was acknowledging, we know that this is happening. We know that the Russian government is doing X, Y, and Z. We know this invasion is coming. I think to some degree, we're hearing current echoes of that in the way that Democrats largely are talking about threats to democracy. Um, and trying to really tell voters like this is a real thing. You know, we heard it from in a speech from President Vi Biden this summer. Too much of what's happening in our country today is not normal. Donald Trump and the MAGA Republicans represent an extremism that threatens the very foundations of our republic. You know, there are legitimate threats to our institutions that are being perpetuated by people who don't believe in the election results. And so that, I think, is a form of pre-bunking, you know, when and if we see anything like a January 6th, you know, attempted again. What's a citizen to do when it comes to the midterm elections that we're about to head into? One of the methodologies that I think is really interesting that can be used just by anyone can, was developed by Michael Caulfield called the SIFT methodology for citizen fact-checking. Each of the letters are the steps in the process. The S stands for stop. I is investigate the source. F is to find a reliable source and the T is to trace it back. And the idea there is before you are sharing information that you don't know where it came from, you don't know the validity of it, that it's worth taking a moment to find out and fact check it and that, that you can do that. So next time you see a campaign lawn sign, don't let it just be part of the landscape. Remember to be critical of candidates' claims. And don't forget to sift through the messaging. These four simple steps could help prevent you from spreading disinformation while making you a more discerning voter. I'm Hari Srinivasan, and this is Take on Fake. Thanks for watching.